Hey guys, what's up? This is Benji Bruce, and I got Arashdi Bazaar here on uh, on the line with me. And I actually uh, I was looking at his videos online, and right now you guys don't know who Arash is. He is a very good PUA pickup artist, very good at business as well, uh, and an extremely accomplished martial artist as well. Uh, and one of the things I noticed about this guy is his inner game, just the way he operates from an inner world. And um, I want him to share that with you guys. So, Arash, um, can you actually tell everybody a little bit about yourself real quick? Uh, hi. Well, first of all, thanks for taking the time to do this. I appreciate it. Um, this is a big question to answer because as people, we're so complex, so many experiences. So, based on the way you presented me right now, I can tell you some things that will fall into that frame. Um, I've done martial arts for 25 years now, and uh, I have a lot of accomplishments in it, but my biggest accomplishment would be, in my mind, um, getting a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt under one of the best in the world, and he had never given a black belt to anybody. I'm the first to get it from him. That's my martial arts, and I've done that, and I still do. Uh, in regards to the pickup arts, uh, I was student, a student of Mystery and Matador, and currently I am the best, and there is nobody better than me. And um, I think that the name pickup artist has hold, to be... Hold on, real quick. Yeah. Um, I, I want to mention something. I want everyone to understand that listen to what Arash says, but mainly pay attention to how he says everything. So I, I also want people to, to take note of that. So, all right, go ahead. All right, very good point. So in the pickup arts, uh, and I put that in quotes because I, I've redefined it here, and you guys will soon hear of it in the world, uh, because I do believe I'm the top of the pyramid when it comes to that, and I think the word pickup art is a misnomer. It's not correct. It, it degrades a very powerful skill, a powerful art form. And um, so anyways, I was Mystery Matador student. Currently, I'm the best, and uh, there, you know I've taken it to levels beyond anybody's imagination, because that's what I do every single day. And then we have, in regards to business, in the Bay Area, I have three uh, businesses that are you know, functioning locations. Like I'm in my office here and then I got two other businesses that are, uh, you know, uh, actual gyms and academies. But then I have a fourth business, which is I work with clubs. And if you look at the online, you could see it. So I'm currently running four businesses. Uh, and um, those things uh, would be related to who I am and the way you presented me, I guess, the, those three areas. Okay. Now, uh, I'm, I'm sure your, your inner game helps a whole lot with just business in general. And, uh, of course, you've mastered martial arts, you've mastered PUA. Uh, and one of the things that I, one of the problems I've had with, like, motivational gurus is they talk about, oh, if you believe it, it comes to you and, and all that sort of stuff. But uh, whenever you're trying to succeed at anything, you're trying to basically master it, whatever it is. So can you talk about how whenever you're trying to master any sort of business role or anything, you're going to struggle at first. You're obviously not going to be the best at first, but then you'll develop like more of the inner game stuff and then you'll get to, to that level of mastery. So can you talk about how to get to a level of mastery? Sure. Um, I, first of all, want to clarify, I don't believe I've mastered uh, the martial arts in any way. I don't think I've mastered the pickup arts and I don't think I've mastered business. I think that's an ongoing thing. What, what, what have I achieved mastery in my own mind? I, I am a master of my own thought process. And that's what I went for ever since I was young. It's funny you asked that because I was actually just thinking about that driving here today. Um, I was paying attention to, uh, in the last 48 hours of my life, I've had a lot of situations occur where new people coming in my life have just mentioned an uh, example would be one of uh, some girl who hit me up online and uh, was asking a question. Anyways, we exchanged numbers, and I spoke to her in person on the phone. And she said to me, she goes, are you, she goes, I've been watching your videos, and now I'm talking to you in person. She goes, are you as confident as you seem? And I was like, oh, of course. I'm. By the way, I, I swear a lot. You okay with that? Or what? Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Uh, we're, talk, we're adults here, right? Yeah. So I said, of course I am. And it was just a ridiculous question. And I said to her, I'm actually holding back because I don't know if you could understand where I'm coming from. So I was thinking about that as I was driving because I had a few other interactions in the morning. And I was like, wow, you know, what is my signature? What is the difference? Is that I don't consider myself the best martial artist and I don't consider myself the 
best pickup artist because of understanding how to uh, pick up a girl, all that. I do consider myself a master at what I do because ultimately uh, my mind and how I think, I believe, is superior to anybody out there. And I'll put that against anybody and I'll put that against God and, and the devil. I don't care. You know, somebody. I have to be... Try, try to convince me to think smaller. Good luck. It's not going to happen. You know, because that's what I do every single day, every single moment. When I catch myself dip a little bit, in my thoughts or in my uh, goals or anything, if I catch myself go a little bit below where I think I should be and how I should be thinking, I get like a, a warning in my head. And I, that's it. I, I just don't listen, dude. I just don't deal with doubt, insecurity, and bullshit like that. I don't have time for it. I don't want it. It's not, it's, it hasn't got me anywhere in life, right? And it's my advantage over everybody who decides to compete against me or be opposing me in business or anything. I know that in the end of the day, I can trigger in their minds all kinds of doubts and insecurities. And may, they may be strong today, but give them some time. They're going to be weak. But it, with me, give me some time, and I'll be stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. So whatever they're dealing with in the moment, and if they're overwhelmed right now or like, wow, this guy's just, well, come back in six months and see where I'm at in a year from now and two years from now. I'm either dead or I'm stronger. That's all there is to it. And not a cliche statement. It's the facts. Because I'm dealing with the mind. On a body level, my body's getting older. What I could do at 24, I can't do at 35. So I, I never pursued that level of uh, mastery in the martial arts, knowing there's always someone faster and stronger than me, without a doubt. I never pursued the level of marketing in business where it was like, you know, uh, here's my price. I'm going to beat your price. And I no, I just, I have my niche. I know what it is. It all has to do with the mind and unbreakable confidence and absolute focus and communication. Those are my things that I care about. And in those fields, there are qualities that I am that I admire in myself and in other beings. So I I start my morning and I end my night, and sometimes in the middle of the night, if I'm aware as I'm dreaming or sleeping, those are the thoughts in my head, and it's a good life because of that for me. Okay, so if someone wanted to to get to that level, the the, the level of thought patterns that you have, um, one of the things I've always thought is that. Uh, you you have to have like an obsession, so it's not you're just thinking about it every now and again. Uh, you have these sort of obsessive thoughts. The same way an alcoholic is obsessive, you're obsessed over like PUA, martial arts. You have to have that sort of obsession to to get to a certain level. So, um, how how do you go about thinking every single day to get to where you are? Because um, I mean I'm assuming uh, you weren't as good as a PUA when you started out. I mean you. Probably just like everyone else. So when you weren't as good, uh, do you think that your your level of, of mindset it helped you? Did you try to like say to yourself, "Oh, I'm I'm better than everyone else at this time," or did you understand like, "Hey, I I suck. I'm not that great." Uh, how are you thinking when you first started out as to where you are now? I don't. Yeah, I, that's a good question. I don't start off ever in any art. Um, trying to be the best uh, at it. Uh, well, well, that's not true. I know I'm going to be the best when I start something, but I don't say, wow, you know, I'm better than so-and-so, I'm better than so-and-so. I get obsessed with the art form. I, I see value in it, and I want to be the best, and I love doing it. I, I just love doing it. You know, uh, i give an example. In present time, everything I always teach my students in present time is everything you always look for is here. So in present time, I love doing this interview because it allows me to once again in my day put forth these ideas and these vibrations. I love doing it, and I would do it. I would do it for free. I would pay to do it. I don't give a shit, as long as it allows me to get these ideas out again and solidify them. And in the same spirit, I would do anything else. So when you're first starting out or anything, you have to have a love for it, you know? And if, we, if you don't, then you have to reevaluate your goals and stuff and see why you're doing it. Because I, if I don't like something, I won't do it. When I was doing martial arts at some point um, towards my black belt career, I um, ended up having a this really love-hate relationship with the art form because uh, the the way that I got my black belt was very painful. It's, it's probably the, that's why it goes down as the biggest achievement I had in my life because my instructor is a, a no nonsense kind of guy, and I would experience pain every day for eleven years, and um, I would just have to really motivate myself to get the fuck out of bed and train every day, right? And I hated it. I hated every second of it from the, every fucking second of it. 
And I had to make the decision a lot of times, like, do I really want to do this? Because I'm not the kind of guy who does things he doesn't like. But you keep your eyes on the goal. I knew how important it was for me to be what I consider a legit black belt under a legit instructor. I'd done martial arts for 25 years, and I didn't believe any of my earlier belts meant anything to me once I found the new art form. So uh, when you start off something, you have to have a love and a passion for it. Man, the word passion comes from the root word suffering, and people don't understand that. If you have a passion for something, you have to be willing to suffer for it. So when people say, oh, you know, I'm, I, blah, blah, I'm so passionate, I'm like, are you willing to suffer for it? Are you willing to be dead broke? Are you willing to not have sleep? Are you willing to go through rejection? Are you willing to uh, be, be ridiculed and, and devoured by society? And if you are, then you got passion. And I am willing to go through all of that to make stuff happen. Because what they see right now is they see success in my life. And let me just tell you, this is the tip of the iceberg. But what they don't see is how much um, pain and rejection I've had to deal with for now people to acknowledge it. You know what I mean? When I first became a pickup artist here, in the Bay Area, they, would, they were blogging about me, I remember, about that I'm fake, I'm no good, and I'm, I mean, it was just, un, I would, I would be told by people, and I would go online, and after a while I stopped looking at it, people that didn't know me were saying what a fake, phony pickup artist I was, and that was about two, three years ago, and now those same people, you know, I see them in seminars and stuff, and I tell you something, from me to you, man, if there was no laws of the land, I would jump from the crowd, uh, into the crowd, and I would rip their face off with my hands, slowly, you see? And that's something that I want people to understand about winning and <clears throat> succeeding. I believe if you don't have this energy that I just said right now, you're never going to understand the level of success I have. They see it in my eyes. They're not forgiven by me. And I will go out of my way, I hope they listen to this, to make sure that every single one of them does never procreates on this planet again. I can't stand them because when I was coming up through t the ranks, they did everything they could to destroy me at my weakest point. And then we have in society, let me give you some inner game that's very particular to myself. Um, here's some inner game. We have in society this idea that you have to be nice to everyone and love everyone. That's the biggest crock of shit I've ever heard in my life. In no way, shape, or form do I want my competition to succeed. Straight up. You're either my allies, which means your business and my business somehow works together, and we both grow, and we're both okay with that. Or you're the competition. And if you're the competition... If I get a chance to destroy you, I will destroy you. And when I sleep, I think about it. And when I wake up, I think about it. And the biggest target in the world is on your head until you're no longer a competition. And that's actually important in success. Because when you look at the history of the planet, that's how every nation was built. That's how every movement was done. It, it's, and people go, well, no, there was a peaceful movement. Look, dude, we still don't have peace. That's the problem. There are movements... But how many fucking centuries have people been trying to make peace by being peaceful and shit like that? And then where do you find peace? In the place where nobody wants to attack it. Everybody can live happily ever after. Okay? So this is an inner game is that people, to generate this level of energy and power, create, you have to be willing to get out there and be hit. And there's a courage to it. In today's world, we're missing courage. Too many people are half-assing their pickup, their seduction, their business. They're, they're humbling themselves. They walk up. Oh, you know, blah, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm just now using uh, <clears throat> this as a metaphor. I'm a mentalist. I, I kind of do this. I kind of that. But here's the presentation. Here's the presentation. Here's how I would introduce myself if I was a mentalist. I would say, you know, there's one place that people keep their secrets, and every single person has their secrets and their fantasies, and they think they're safe. I'm the person who has a key to your mind, and I can see right into it. In fact, I could plant things into it. And I want you to think about your ex-boyfriend or your ex-girlfriend, and I can make that person impotent with what I can do with my mind. Or I could make them get hives on their body or get sick and devastated. I could make them be brokenhearted and never be able to think about another person. You ask me what I do? Well, I play in the mind. That's my playground. I'm a mind bender. Boom. <laughs> All right. Now, All you know, right, the good. beauty of it is I'm either <laughs> hallucinating and I'm some fucking, uh, what is it going to call Napoleon complex, they call that. Or there might be some truth in what I'm saying. And if there is some truth in what I'm saying, then you better fucking watch yourself. <laughs> and that's what people see in my life. I talk like that. This is who I am. I don't doubt it. Mm -hmm. So then they have to go, okay, well, he's pretty convinced. And then they have to have that little thing in the back of their mind. What if? He's not kidding. 
Yes, that's all I need, okay? Because you're a mentalist, mm -hmm. and my art form, Arash's art form, is in the mind. Mm -hmm. It's not a stage magician. I combine attraction with the mind and communication. Those are the three things. And when I told you that the pickup we do is at a whole different level, it's just unreal what we can do right now, bro. I mean, it's just crazy because it is what I said. I am a mind bender, and I love it. Yeah. With words, we can cast spells now. It's fucking amazing. It's all the shit we grew up as little kids wanting to be, I am. And now I'm taking it to the next and the next and the next level, and I just keep thinking, sooner or later, I'm going to have to die. And I hope I get some shit done for real, and I can... Uh, leave something on the planet and just evolve the, the, the people, the people that deserve it. We're like the, the Jedi, we're the Sith. Not Jedi, <laughs> Jedi are kind of weak, the Sith. <laughs> All right, that, that's cool. Actually, you mentioned uh, how PUA, it is more communication rather than just picking up women. And that that's the problem I have with a lot of people. I tell them about PUA, and I tell them it's more communication rather than just picking up women. Uh, but they didn't really understand it. So can you kind of talk more about how it's more about communication rather than just picking up women? Yes. Let me tell you how to present uh, the pickup arts to anybody, uh, for just for everybody out there. So you guys, and I, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> refine this later because it's just something that's been in my world recently and I know I'll do better with it but for now instead of trying to say it's the pickup artist blah 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 and it's communication here's what you say you say I'm a relationship expert simple because that's what it is it's how people relate to each other it's how men relate to men men relate to women women relate to men all that stuff and you have to be a relationship expert so you say I'm a relationship expert that specializes in attraction what 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 uh, attracts people to each other and communication Wow, okay, now now people get interested. Oh, really? What do you mean? Like Hitch, sometimes people say, like the movie Hitch, you say better than Hitch. <clears throat> sometimes people say, oh, did you see that show on VH1, the, uh, blah, blah, blah. I say, yeah, that's my good friend. That's the guy that taught me. Oh, I don't believe you. And then we're into a conversation. Or they just go, wow, that's really interesting. So what are you doing? I say, well, I teach men and women the art of attracting the opposite sex and how their communication with themselves, because people talk to themselves, and with each other prevents them from getting the results they want because nobody's really fulfilling the relationship because they have false information. We have the truth, and you can look at my life and see the results of it. So that's one way I would present it, you know. But but don't say right away, pick up artists and then go into it because they already have an idea and it destroys it. It's mm -hmm. like saying Charles Manson is a really good guy. <laughs> Just the idea of Charles Manson throws out a bunch of things into them, you know what I mean? So yeah. you can start off by saying, I know a really good guy who blah, 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 deep philosopher, boom, 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 wrongly accused, and you know, Charles Charles Now, by then, it's easier to... Okay. Wait, hold on a second, this thing uh, is kind of freezing up. There's a language, bro, there's a language. Okay. All right, all right, cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So, um, okay, so I... I'll uh, I'll work on that. I realize uh, just as you said it, I realize as soon as I say PUA, they 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 pretty much put it into a frame, and now I'm yep. trying to take them out of the frame when I should yeah. do it the exact opposite. But um, start start with the frame. Tell them what it is. Start on the outside, then work your way into the middle of the circle. Yeah. Start in the circumference. It's this 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 this. So it's kind of like you're gonna tell them where the mansion is, and you start and you say you're gonna come up to the pasture. There's a gate. And then you go and there's a green grass and you're going to see this. And then you go, there's the house. Well, what people do is say, they say, there's a house there. And then you come up and there's a, so we got to start from the outside and go in. You got to say what it is you're doing and what the goals are and blah, blah, blah. And as they start to understand it, then you get into, you say it's, it, or you could even say it used to be called the pickup arts when it was underground. Because it was underground, you see? That was a pickup. The book, the game Neil wrote was uh, penetrating the underground society of pickup artists. That's why it was pickup arts. It was underground because you and I, as the initiates of the art, can tell it to each other you're a pickup artist. But if it's an underground art, you don't go outside and go, I'm a pickup artist, then it's not underground anymore. So as an initiated group, anytime through history, you have how you relate to each other, and then you have how you relate to society. And society is not educated enough or has not even earned the right to call me a pickup artist because they don't understand what that means. So they can call me a relationship expert. That's good. We're good. The okay. communications uh, therapist or whatever the fuck they want to call it. Pick up arts is reserved for the people inside the group. All right. All right. Now, um, like as far as uh, business goes, we'll get more to, to the business. Uh, I want to know how you think about like your time, how you 
how you think about your money, how you use money as far as like a business goes, because obviously a business owner doesn't spend his money on dumb things like most people do. Uh, so how you think about your time, your money, and uh, of course one of your fitness, um, one of your fitness clubs, it it's all women, so you don't let, let yep. men come in. So uh, how do you kind of justify the fact that you're willing to, to kind of separate clients saying, hey, no, I don't want you, I want you sort of thing. Uh, yes. So talk I'm, time, I'm very, money, and then clients sort of thing. Okay. I'm very honest, uh, and that gives me a certain integrity, you know, and I don't like men as much as I like women. I love women. They're beautiful. And uh, I have enough beautiful girls around me, and they, you know, I have the marketing down. Why, why can I have, how can I have a strictly women's fitness center that's literally kicking the ass of all the gyms around here? Well, I'm also the number one seduction artist in the world. It would only make sense that I know what women want. <clears throat> My business plan is strictly and only game. I never graduated college. I thought it was stupid. I've not read one goddamn business book in my fucking life. I've read a lot of books, but I don't... I'm not going to read their books on business and economics. Obviously, they don't know what they're doing. Because look at their statistics. But I do know what attracts women to anything. So my women's fitness center, it's, it's like me in a, in a business form. Or me in a, in a, what do you call it, a location. All the policies and the way we act and what it's like. Like, if you understand the idea of a pleasure bubble in, in, biz, in uh, pickup arts, what a pleasure bubble is, uh, for better reference on that, go to Venusian Arts. Love Drop has a great reference on that. When you walk into my um, fitness center, that's kind of what it's like. Women want to stay there. You know, you look at the pictures, and, and I'm not going to get into the intricacies of it because I'm sure a lot of people want to copy my style, and they can't. Forget it. So that's that. And now I have a survival and fight center, which is for men and women. And that also, I understand what men want because if you are a legit pickup artist, you have to understand men. You have to be able to walk in, take the most alpha guy, and school him. You have to AMOG him. So I can do that. So that means now my fitness center, I mean my survival and fight center, is now in the process of AMOGing all the other gyms and fight centers. And I can do it through communication because you never go out there in the field and start beating all the guys up. That's not acceptable. And I'm not out there threatening anybody physically, but the way I communicate about my, my business is literally destroying them. And the more they talk and the more they try to talk, the stupider they're going to sound because they're missing the basics of attraction. Why are people attracted, intrigued, fascinated by someone or something? I know the answer to that, and that's my business when it comes to uh, the fight in the fitness center. So, uh, and then you were asking about, you know, what I would spend money on. I spend money on people that work for me. I want them to get paid. That's a big deal. Big deal. I could get paid a lot more. In fact, people think I'm a millionaire. I'm not even close to it, but I will be. But why? I need to make them into millionaires, the people that work for me. Then I'm a multimillionaire. So that's my goal. Next, I don't need to save money any more than I need it for any kind of emergency. Other than that, all money goes into promotion. That's it. I want the world to know who I am before I'm dead. So that's, you know, not too much longer, and I got to make it happen. It's a little planet, little blue planet, and I want the whole world to know. I want Australia to know. I want Africa to know. I want Iran to know. India. And the way you can do that is get the word out, promote. We're lucky we have Internet. Look, at you and I are talking on the fucking Internet. It's crazy. Yeah. So they didn't have this, you know, 40, 50, 60 years ago, yet the whole world knew who Harry Houdini was by word of mouth. With no internet, that's right. If he could do it, I could do it. If Barnes, uh, you know, what's his name? Barnum and Bailey Circus can do it, I can do it. And those guys did it back in time. Now, anybody could be a star. And am I trying to be a star? I don't know. That's a weird word. I'm just trying to make sure the world knows my message before this uh, light extinguishes. You know what I mean? Before the candle goes out. Okay. So, I mean, you pretty much, you don't spend money on... Uh just dumb stuff, just going out to buy a ton of clothes and you'd rather spend money on making you more money uh, rather than... If I buy clothes, it's clothes for promotion. It's yeah, simple. Yeah. It's to create my avatar. Okay. If I go eat somewhere, it's somewhere where it's worth being seen. If I... I just don't do anything else. You know, we're talking about obsession. I don't do anything else. Morning till night. You and I are talking right now, prior to this conversation. I had a friend of mine, she was here. She was visiting. 
that was game. After she left, I was studying. Then we're online, we're gonna finish, I'm gonna go pick up my girlfriend, hang out with her a couple hours, then come back and study, then go teach, and then uh, that's it. All the way to the end of the night, it'll end with me reading something and going to bed. But I love what I'm doing. I love all those things. So there's no wasted motion. Yeah, and this is how I always know that. I can catch people down the road. Because they're either doing as much as I am, or I'm going to catch them. And I've already dusted my competition because they're lazy. People are lazy. I know that about them. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with it. They should be lazy. Because yep. I'm going to win. Uh, speaking about how, how you love what you do, um, I can't remember one of the videos you were talking about, uh, like a vacation. Now people say, oh, why don't you go on vacation and, and all that. And you're like, I yeah. people say things like, oh, why don't you go out and party and all that. I'm like, I like doing this. This is what I like doing. Uh, so can you talk about that too, real quick? Uh, just how... Yeah, man, it's one of my philosophies, bro. I get a lot of my stuff from nature. I believe nature is a good uh, teacher on how to win and lose. Not necessarily a good teacher on how to be a great human being, but how to win or lose. And um, nature doesn't have any... You know, I was actually talking about this yesterday when I was teaching at the fitness center. I said to them, yeah, it's Monday, blah, blah, blah. And I'm up, basically, it's a group of like 40 women. And then I said, ah, you guys fell for it. I said, you fucks, you fell for it. Let me tell you why. I said, because there's no squirrel or panther or eagle right now going, man, it's Monday, here we go. I said, Monday is a man-made idea. They're just surviving, they're living, it's another day. But you today got up and said, oh, it's Monday and the weekend's over. I said, that's bullshit, because I didn't do it. It's just another day. I hate the fucking weekend because people's schedule changes. I don't want to change my schedule. I love what I do. Why would I go on vacation? What does that mean? Does that mean take a break from your life? Are you really that fucking miserable? Well, if you are, then change your life, okay? Because I don't get the idea of I'm going to take time off. If a squirrel took time off for three days to not gather nuts, that squirrel is dead. If, a, if any animal, they don't get it. Go explain that to a fucking bird. Oh yeah, for the next three days, we're gonna go, and check this out, we're gonna go into the other side of the jungle. What do you mean? Aren't you, is there your nest here? Yeah, but the weather's good over there, so are you moving there and building a nest? Nah, I'm gonna go, and for three days, I'm just gonna fly around and eat worms there, and I'm gonna come back. What about your nest? I don't know, I paid the rent. Stupid. Humans. <laughs> dumb, 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 dumb. But you know, I've come to terms with that, um, I'm okay with them being dumb. Before I would get so angry, and I'm still angry, but it's different. Now it's channeled differently. I'm like, you know what? They are stupid, most of them, and that's why they're never gonna uh, be where I'm at. One of the things that just popped into my head, actually, is uh, as far as your opinion, what's the number one business skill someone could could have? I mean, you run four businesses, so what's the number one business skill you think someone could have? I think it's a combination. It's communication, first of all. You have to be a master of it in whatever you do, man. I really believe that. If Okay, if you're dealing with people, I have a service organization. I only deal with people. I don't build cars or computers. I deal with people. So in that case, you have to have good communication skills. And then you have to understand what's really missed out there is how do you get people to stop on your product and you're not background? How do you get them to just, you know, it's like a guy walks into a place, he's peacocking, right? How do you peacock your business? How do you make it where they just go, oh, and they stop for a second. All you need is that one moment of their attention stops on you. You gotta learn how to do that in business. And then from there, you have to learn to create attraction. I mean, it's the same model, man. I'm telling you, you have to create attraction in a business. Then you gotta make the customer comfortable with you. And then you have to seduce them. What does seduce mean in, in business? It means they buy your product over and over and over. You could fuck a girl once, doesn't mean you're a great, great artist. When she gives you herself constantly, she's in a relationship with you, now you really seduced her. Same thing, you get a customer who buys once from you, uh, you're not going to be successful. You need a reoccurring customer. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. Um, <laughs> I should teach at Harvard, I'm telling you. They don't know this shit. They try to get into all kinds of dumb shit. They're so stupid, man. I, I agree. The the whole college thing, it's... Uh, I, I only liked college because of the experience. Uh, the, the knowledge, I could learn more at Barnes & Nobles than I ever could in college. But, uh, Absolutely. Well, speaking of books, um, you say you don't really read too much. Uh, you... You get more of your, your mentality from actually doing it rather than reading about stuff, right? No, no, no. That's not correct. I read all the time. Or, I have about or, I have about four libraries as big as, I don't know if you can see the back wall. I have, I read. I never stop reading. I'm always reading. So that's not true. I always read. I watch videos. 
and I listen to lectures. And my day actually consists of watching videos, reading, and listening to lectures. So I do read. I just don't read the bullshit that they, they sell out there. You Like I said, Barnes & Noble are online now. You just go and you find what fascinates you. That's one of the things the girl asked me last night. She said, what do you read? I said, I read whatever fascinates me. And different things fascinate me at different times. I could be walking and then I see something and it's interesting or fascinating. Then I go figure out, I start reading about it. If it keeps my interest, I'll keep reading. And, you know, one of the things about me is if I like a subject, I want to know everything about it. So, okay. And if I don't, then fuck it. I don't have time for that. So, like, for example, I can't change the, uh, the tire on my car. You know, I don't even know what a fucking carburetor is. I've heard about what a carburetor is. And people can laugh because, like, here's this alpha male who doesn't know. I don't fucking know. I don't even know how to fucking wash my clothes. The only thing I can cook is a fucking egg. Barely. And that's my life. So it's like my survival skills on that end are zero. On the other hand, I can tell you all about communication, the mind, and what makes men and women tick. Well, yeah, because I spend all my time doing that shit. Okay. How long did it take you to get to, to where you're at? Like, when you first started PUA to, to now, how long was that? It was about, I think, almost now, three and a half, four years, probably. It's okay. been about four years, probably. Okay, well, that's, that's quicker than I thought. Um, uh, but I had a lot of background before then on, uh, you know, I spent my whole life studying the mind and communication. So the inner game was just tip top. So by the time I got there, it was just understanding the outer moves. You know what I mean? Okay. It wasn't like I had to work on my inner game. That just never did. I remember Matador. <laughs> I had taken a student of mine to Matador um, so he could study with him. We were in L.A. And then two moments when we were coming back, my student was... You know, he was just in shock, and he, two moments that stood out for him. He told me, he goes, he goes, you were the pizza parlor, and Matador came to me and goes, I created a fucking monster with that guy, meaning me. And then there was another time we went to the to the club, and Matador pulled him aside. He said, look at Arash. Look how he walks into the place, and you could just feel from him. He exudes that he is the prize as he walks through, and women respond to him as if they're chasing him right away. And he goes, learn that. That's rare. So, uh... But that's inner game, though. Being a monster, or being called a monster, and walking in like you're the prize, that's inner game. The outer game is just not leaning in, learning how to nag, body language, smiling, knowing how to kino, all, you know. So I just spend a lot of time learning those moves really well, and the inner game has always been there. Okay, so w would you say, like, as far as inner game, outer game, like, let's say your, your inner game is here, your outer game is here, so you have to get your outer game up to here before your inner game can go up to here, or... Does your inner game have to go higher, like above your outer game, like that? Ultimately, your inner game is all it is. Outer, game, because if you have a strong enough frame, the mystery says in his um, mystery method book, you could get away with anything. And I sometimes just, just to see where I'm at, will do something really ridiculous or say something really stupid and see if I can get away with it. And a lot of times I do. Um, so no, it's all inner game, but. Not all. I mean, I would say 90 to 95 percent in a game, and then learn the moves. Learn the moves. It's like the guy who has studied martial arts, but he's unwilling. He's not willing to defend himself because he's got this religious belief that he can't hurt people. And that guy is not dangerous. And then you have another guy who grew up hurting people. He likes hurting people. He's a criminal. That guy is dangerous even with one punch in the street. And that's an inner inner game difference between them. I know guys who are very good at fighting who actually get beat up because they hesitate. And I know guys who barely know how to fight, like as in technically, but never get ever get beat up because they won't hesitate to punch someone in the face if they fuck with them. Okay, all right. And uh, speaking of fighting, um, how how hard do you train to to get to where you're at? Like how I train hard? Very hard. I don't train as much anymore. I've now dedicated a lot of time that I used to train, I'm now, I'm at the highest levels of my research that I've can, ever been into. Can you also say what, what you consider a lot to be, because I know some people, when they hear a lot, they're like, oh, an hour a day. Uh, so Okay, yeah, it's, maybe it's less than, you know, it's definitely less than a champion, but I would train five to six days a week for about two to two and a half hours, but that adds up day after day, month after month, year after year. And I did it for 11 years, so... You know, I took four months off in 11 years, and I remember that. Other than that, so, you know, 10 years and six months, I train five to six days a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. And uh, with the level of training I'm talking about is imagine if every single day, if every single day you got in a fight with somebody who kicked your ass. It wasn't like I was kicking ass for 10 and a half years. I just wasn't. But, uh, you know, what I have to show for it, 
And once again, I wasn't the biggest or the baddest of the students in my uh, instructor's academy, but I'm also the only black belt he's ever given out. Why? I know it has to do with my my uh, inner game. I just know. I just know because I know people in my class who were physically better than me, yet they weren't qualified to get that black belt. Man, it's all in a state of mind in the end, brother. Okay. We're all gonna get die and wither away anyways. I mean, you're gonna be let's say if you make it to 85, 90 years old. Why are people going to be around you and sit at your feet and give you, you know, an hour of their time willingly because you're going to fucking do a cartwheel? No. It's what you have in here and how you communicate it that's going to bring everybody to you. If you're a 90-year-old man and you're sleeping with 25-year-old women, you either have unbelievable resources of wealth or something in here that you could take them and, you know, give them experiences just through their mind and communication. They have to feel like... By being around you, their survival is tremendously increased, man. Everything else, to me, is secondary. Who gives a shit how buff you are? Uh, yes, look good. But don't waste your time with that. While you're still uh, capable, get some true wisdom, some true knowledge. There's a, there's a thing that I sticks in the back of my mind that's very important to me. I actually originally heard it, either it was in the book The Game or Mystery Method, but it, it, it's attributed to Mystery saying that the power of owner, wait, was that him or Darren Brown? I don't know. Which, it was one of those magicians that said, um, the power in a good illusion is the fact that it may just be real. What if it's real, right? Man, that was a big deal to me. It's one of those statements that just really, like, clicked. So when you present yourself, you have to have so much certainty. You know, my teacher, Manu, he passed away. You hear a lot of his name in, in uh, videos and stuff. He was the one that gave me the certainty that I have in my life. And you have to have such certainty when you present yourself that the person should just think in the back of their mind, what if he is telling the truth? Mm. You know what I mean? What if he's right? Mm. And that little key point is the key that opens the door to their mind, I believe, for you to persuade them and do whatever you want. So you've got to be totally certain about it. Totally certain. That's why you got to be honest with yourself first, more than anything else. Don't lie to you, man. You can lie to the world, but don't lie to you, because then you're fucked. Yeah. They will lie to themselves all the time. Oh, I just want a girlfriend. That's why I'm studying pickup arts. No, you don't, you fuck. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You want to fuck as many girls as you can and get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell them that. The other day, the guy I was doing a lecture, the guy was like, well, this is for business. The guy says, uh, you know, I have a hard time staying motivated. How do you stay motivated day and night? I looked at him and said, you don't deserve to get girls. And he was like, huh? <laughs> you don't deserve. I said, you're asking me as a grown man to another grown man how I stay motivated about women? Now, everything I've ever done in my life has had women in the back of it, in the back of my mind. And that's a fact. I said, the fact that you don't have enough motivation, I can guarantee you, sir, you're not uh, ever to get as many girls as I get. I'm not going to tell you how to get motivated. I, I think you need to take a better look at what you're doing in your life. If you've lost motivation for women because it became more important to do anything else, you're not being honest with you. Or you have some kind of mutated gene that's fucked up. Because yeah. a healthy man will be thinking about women, period. That's what we do. Yeah. Well, stop that's... apologizing for that shit, man. You know? Stupid. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny you say that because um, in, in my book, in, in one of my books that I'm writing, I talk about uh, if you need to be motivated to succeed, then you're going to fail. But if you have the mindset of success, you can't not succeed. And um, Absolutely. It, it's I've always thought like, man, people that that's what I I just hate motivational gurus, how they do that, because it's like, yeah, the secret, just believe in it and it comes to you. And I'm like, man, if you got to get motivated to do something, uh, I don't think you're going to actually succeed at it because it it's like that, that's why I like that obsession factor. And. I was thinking about it for so long. I would look at guys like Will Smith, Mark Zuckerberg, everyone. I'm like, just look at them. They're obsessed with what they do. It's like an alcoholic is obsessed with alcohol or crack addicts obsessed with crack. They're obsessed with what they're doing. I was like, that's amazing to me. And, um, yeah. And, and, you know, knowledge, knowledge itself is not power. I mean, we used to hear that all the time. Knowledge, correct knowledge with action behind it is power. You can have all the knowledge in the world and sit on your ass and do nothing about it. You know what I mean? People have to act. You have to act. And that takes courage. And I think that's a word that's missing, and you're going to hear more and more of it. I'm probably going to do a lecture on it very soon uh, on just courage, man. Without courage, it's like, come on.
come on, man. Nothing's going to happen. you got to be courageous to approach the girl. As a businessman, you have to be courageous to get out there and get your product out there and be ready to be rejected. That's the way it is. Yeah. And you got to be about something. Stop trying to be about everything. One of the guys that works for me, we were having a meeting, and he was like, well, you know, I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> what happened is I, I made this video. You'll see it very soon. I made it yesterday. And I basically told, I've had a lot of people who've studied with me here, man, but they're not around. So in the video, I give them a message, and I say, you have a choice now. You could start coming around and studying, or you could go to hell somewhere else, and I can tell you that for the rest of your life, I will never teach you again. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. People that know me, know me, because I don't want them to <clears throat> say I study with Arash and not be able to demonstrate what I, what I know they can demonstrate. So I'm about to send this video out to like 200 people. And my staff is freaking out, some of them, some of them are loving it. They're going to see it tonight, and then I'm going to send it out. But it's very stern and strong, because you can't be for everyone. you got to know what, here's a business model, you got to know what you're about, <clears throat> put that shit out there, and know the moment you put it out there, people are going to oppose you. But if they're not opposing you, then you're not about anything. But believe me, if you're about something, and you communicate it well enough, there will be people that will support you. Put your attention on the people that support you, fuck the ones that don't, and get on with it. That's it. That's all there is to it. Find out what your life is about, what your passion is, what are you willing to suffer for, what are your goals, what do you want to achieve. At that moment, align your ethical principles with it and move forward. And don't look back and don't let anybody stop you because I guarantee you the candle will extinguish sooner or later. So while it's here burning bright, make that shit shine, man. Make the sun be envious of your shine you know what i mean make the moon be envious of your shine at night make the fucking gods and demons be afraid that you are alive you know make them i say make the gods jealous make them jealous if they exist let them want to be a rosh bazaar and if they don't exist well who gives a shit that was a great thought anyways you know what i mean that's the inner game that's my thoughts that's the most valuable thing i think i possess that people should understand. It's not a joke. I mean what I say. Um, think bigger. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Thinking way too small. Way too small. That's going to be tonight's lecture I'm giving. It's called uh, Unleash the Titan Within. And I'm going to start with that. You know, everyone's thinking too tiny. There's thinking this tiny little thing, you know, so they degrade themselves. Have some respect for yourself, man. Have some respect for your, for your heritage and the fact that you're still alive and somebody did something right. Have some respect for your future generations and have some respect for the fact you got up and you're still breathing and you're going to either focus on some bullshit or you're going to focus on some, real, some stuff that makes you strong. Everybody's dealing with doubts and insecurities. That is not what makes you special. Everybody's dealing with drama. That is not what makes you special. People think it's their drama that makes them special. It's not your drama. It's your power that makes you special. It's your abilities. In X-Men, it's not their drama that makes them special. It's their abilities and power and how they use it that I admire. And people have to admire you for your abilities and power. So get in touch with that side of you and disregard and kill that little voice in your head that's, oh, well, how do you know? Shut up. Mm -hmm. Just just give yourself a shut up in your head. Or even say it out loud. Sometimes, I, you know, I teach my students sometimes, out loud. Just say, shut up! And watch how the voice quiets down. You go, oh. Because it's just some little machine in the head. Well, uh, Arash, uh, thanks for coming on and everything. Thanks for the interview. Um, real quick, uh, just tell people where they can contact you and, and a website or email or something if they want to stay in touch, get one of your products or something. Okay. Um, se seductiveinstinct.com. www.seductiveinstinct.com. Uh, the website's been redone. I'm pretty pleased with the new one. Uh, I also have started an online university. Um, check that out on there. And then my Facebook is uh, Facebook slash dot com slash Arash D. Bizarre. There's a few of them. Uh, look for the one that looks active. The other ones aren't. I don't know. Other people made stupid shit like that. It's not the fan one. I have my own one. So those are the ways to get a hold of me. Uh, email. Go to, go to uh, YouTube. YouTube has a Seductive Instinct channel. I don't know, man. Find me. You know, when I wanted to find mystery, nothing could stop me. Yeah. That's how I felt about it. You know, one of the things that... Uh, one of the coaches was saying the other day in my academy, he was like, he really wants people to get uh, a good understanding when uh, they come to my boot camps. And I agree with that. But then I told him, I said, you know what? Let me tell you the difference. The people who want to learn, you can't stop them. You can put whatever in their path, and you can't stop them. Yeah. They will find a way to learn. 
And then the other people, no matter how many times you beat them in the head over with it, they're not going to learn. So as a teacher, I've learned that lesson. My job is to communicate my truth as clearly as possible in the right vibration to, the, to everybody, as many people as possible. If they get it, they would have gotten it anyways. If they don't get it, they wouldn't have gotten it anyways. But we, uh, as teachers, a lot of times break our own hearts because we're like, and, and then you get an argument and then the person goes out and comes back and says, I failed. It's like, you know what? You would have failed no matter what you did, you ass wife. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when a person wants to succeed, nothing can stop them. That's the state of mind. So they, that's why they have to be honest with themselves. If a person wants to work for me, I tell them, do you want to be a multimillionaire or not? Straight up. Because if you don't, you need to get the fuck out. <laughs> or if someone wants to learn pick up for me, I say, do you want to be surrounded by a lot of beautiful women? And when you get in a relationship, do you still want to be able to be with other girls or not? Because if not, I'm not the right teacher, man. I'm not here just to teach you how to overcome your approach anxiety. That's thinking way too small. What the fuck are you doing? Get out of here. Okay, that's like taking a the power to teleport and just using it to go from your couch to your refrigerator. Really? That's why you learn to teleport and never using it outside. Stupid. You learn to teleport inside banks and inside, you know, airplanes and on the pyramids and use it for some, some real thing. Don't fucking teleport to your kitchen, you dumbass. Just walk over there if you have to. So, so pretty much uh, the inner game is do whatever it takes to succeed?